Are you on board with this nuclear idea from your counterparts in the in the federal parliament? <clears throat> I've said previously, Laura, that we're open to it. I think there's a few things we need to bear in mind. I think for long-term investments like nuclear will require, I do think it requires bipartisan support. We're certainly open to it and we certainly understand and believe that in the decades ahead, let's be reasonable, let's, let's adopt a common sense approach. We're going to need a diverse range of renewable sources of energy and energy sources that can be deployed when other sources are out of action, whether yeah. it's due to storm events or the like. So but obviously this has exposed the unreliability of coal, would you agree? Well, let's, let's also understand that the Victorian government has agreed to underwrite the existing coal fleet in Victoria yeah. up to certain periods. They differ from coal fire power station to the other. But during that time where the government has underwritten them, it's got to make sure that it can deliver what Victorians are paying for. We're paying for these mm. coal-fired power stations to deliver reliable energy. So what Jacinta Allen and her government need to do, Laura, is make sure that we're getting, getting the energy in a reliable way because we're paying for it. Yeah, it's pretty wild that in 2024, even it was a, it was a decent storm. Absolutely, it was um, you know concentrated in a region, and those, we've all seen the pictures of those transmission uh, towers bent out of shape. But it's pretty wild that in 2024, that AEMO is asking businesses to basically stop trading, stop manufacturing, and they don't have a timeline on when when they can resume that because the state doesn't have enough power. You bet it is, Laura. It's it's not fair and it's not appropriate. It's all avoidable. And let's remember, it's not just about the businesses and the employees who will suffer. You know, what experiences like last night remind us is that, you know, all of us would have been thinking last night, if this outage goes on and on, we're going to have to dispose of all of the food in our fridge. Mm -hmm. And think about, now, we're OK as a family, but think about all those families who are struggling um, to make ends meet having to dispose of food and perishables, medicines that need to be refrigerated. This is very personal for people. And governments have a responsibility to make sure that they deliver without failure on the basic necessities we all need. Yeah, and that has not been d delivered, uh, at least in the last 24 hours, a little bit less. Uh, right. Just finally, what uh, have you asked the question about when power would be restored? I mean, our best advice is, you know, some areas it could be two days, but other areas up to a couple of weeks. Yeah, and that's going to be very hard on those families and communities that are affected. It's not acceptable. And all of this stuff, as I said earlier, Laura, because of reviews that have been undertaken in the last couple of years into this very issue, the government hasn't responded. So it's not fair on those people who have to wait. Uh, but we'll seek briefings from relevant agencies okay. today. We obviously see as a first priority to make sure given fires are, uh, are undergoing at the moment and also the outages. We want to make sure that that priority is met first, but we'll be seeking briefings on all of those other matters. OK, John Pesciuto, please keep us posted. We'll speak soon. Thanks, Laura.